10 things you shouldn't believe. That's the dumbest thing I've ever heard. Experience is truth. The simple reality is that we can be deluded. Our experiences can be hallucinations. We can witness things from a certain point of view. And as a result, our experiences aren't truths, even if they might be in some way an aspect of the wider reality. To assume too much about the nature of experience is to delude yourself. And very often people create an idea of what's going on. And that idea, far from being the truth, is merely a pet theory. As a result, experience is very often not truth. That's the dumbest thing I've ever heard. You must be correct. How could you not be? The simple arrogance of the believer. The person who thinks that they know better. They believe that they must have the truth. They must be in the right. If they're in the right, if they have the right arguments, then they must be correct in all ways. It doesn't really work. Just because you may well be correct in certain ways, or you believe you're correct in certain ways, does not mean you necessarily are. A skeptic should be critical of their own work, not merely critical of the work of others. That's the dumbest thing I've ever heard. The internet is correct. You found an article, you found a link, you found a PDF file, or whatever the case may be. You have a special source, special authority, and it supports your belief, a belief that you're now taking very seriously. The problem is, there are so many sources for information that they could easily be wrong. You may well find something on the internet that seems to be very true, but could be extremely wrong. But if you've been convinced, you claim that it is correct. You can't always be sure what you read, what you see, what you hear, is in fact correct. That's the dumbest thing I've ever heard. There are perfectly reliable news sources. Now the problem with that idea is the idea of perfection. Is the news perfect? It can't be by definition. Human beings are imperfect, even if you tried to have objective news, the facts, portrayed as they are. You would still need to present them in a certain way. Because you have people doing that for you. You have a narrative, you have a set view. Even if it's not set to a particular agenda, there is still a certain amount of spin. So really, in reality, even the best sources of news are far from being perfectly reliable. And indeed, before all the facts are known, there's a lot of speculation, which continues to muddy the waters. That's the dumbest thing I've ever heard. You need to disprove an idea for it to be false. The idea of proving something to make sure that it's actually true, to make sure it's real, makes sense. But many ideas cannot be shown, at least not in totality, to be false. And as a result, an idea might well be untestable, completely imaginary, but because you can't technically disprove it, it must be in some way true. The problem with this particular idea is that you don't actually make your particular pet ideas more real. All that you achieve is the suggestion that your particular idea may well be the case. Poorly defined, beyond testability, beyond reasonable parameters. And as a result, you make a great many things that you don't believe also potentially true within the realm of the non-falsifiable. And so as a result, you could say your Christian God is true. It's a God within the gaps. And before you know it, you can suggest that Thetans and Scientology have the ultimate truth. Simply dwelling in the idea that your belief hasn't been fully debunked doesn't make it in some way true. It may well be that there's some kind of truth to it. That might well be possible. But without evidence, it's a matter of belief. That's the dumbest thing I've ever heard. Quotes are facts. But the question is, are they? Depends on the quote. It could be a fabricated quote. It could be an adapted quote. It could be paraphrased. It could be borrowed from someone else, but attributed to a particular person. A person who didn't originally say it, but they took it from another author, speaker, scientist, politician, whatever the case may be. 
And even then, even if the quote does belong to them, what was the meaning? What was the context? What were they trying to convey? So as a result, you end up with confusion. You may well find a quote from Einstein that you think supports your view. Or Richard Dawkins, or Charles Darwin, or Donald Trump, or whatever the case may be. You may say, hey, check out this quote, and it's two lines. And because it seems to say something quite clever, something quite intelligent, you take it in a certain way. And as a result, you get the answer you seek, even if the context and the meaning of the actual quote was something completely different. The problem is, even the positive or negative, quote mining isn't helpful. That's the dumbest thing I've ever heard. Belief is evidence. But is it though? Is belief evidence? The very quick and simple answer is no. Belief alone is not enough to prove anything. Your dogma, your conviction, whatever the case may be, is irrelevant to the nature of evidence. That's the dumbest thing I've ever heard. Context is irrelevant. The truth is, it isn't. It's a priority. Without context, you might well find some kind of meaning, but you may end up with a false meaning. A different meaning from the work of an author, a politician, a celebrity, a blogger, or whatever the case may be. Taking a few words from here or there, as a quote mine, the minimum effect of removing something from context is to diminish the work. That's the dumbest thing I've ever heard. There is a perfect ideology. The simple truth is, whatever your belief may be, whatever style it may take, exclusive or inclusive, domineering or anarchic, an ideology fails to capture the necessary values to be perfect. You may have something close, something adaptable, something which is quite flexible. In times of need, it can do what you need it to do. But still, it is, by definition, imperfect. You can get closer to perfection, but you'll never truly attain it. There will be difficulties, there will be needs to change, and as you change your ideology, you adapt it, and so it no longer exists as it was. And as times change and needs change, the adaption continues to change your ideology. And if you make that your ideology, it is no longer a set ideology. It's a concept of variation, of adaption and improvement. That's hardly ideological per se. It is practical and logical, but even under the best conditions, it is still far from perfect. That's the dumbest thing I've ever heard. You're important on a planetary or cosmic scale, when the truth is, you're not. If all humanity died tomorrow, the universe would continue as it does now, with no real difference, no real changes. If you vanish tomorrow, oh well, maybe a few people would be surprised. But in the end, it would change very little. Even if you're a very important person, and you suddenly died or vanished, or were deleted from time itself, it would still make probably a very small difference in the scale of things. Unless you're a person making a massive impact on history, it means practically nothing. The odds are the people watching this video will have no impact on history, other than being simply a drop in the ocean. On your own, you're practically nothing. If anything, you might bring around some change, but that change may well not stick, and it's only a handful of people throughout history who've made a deep and lasting impact on humanity. But as I say on a cosmic scale, we're still nothing. The sum of humanity across the whole of human history and prehistory is still nothing compared to the history of the universe. That's the dumbest thing I've ever heard.